Hi everyone, and welcome back to today's Tech Talk. Again, we've got Ben from Sandvik Coromant along with us, and we're gonna be focusing today on drilling and threading. So we're gonna be looking at tapping versus thread milling. Which one do I choose and why? So first, what drill, how do I use it, and what do I need to consider? So first off, you know, we're looking at the drilling operation and, you know, when we're machining a titanium part, you know, we've got to take the material into consideration. So here we've selected our 860 SM, a dedicated product for heat resistant super alloys. Uh, you know, it's all about, as we spoke about before, managing that heat. So here we've got a dedicated grade and geometry to get the best out of the machining process. Uh, and also we've selected uh, through coolant as well. You know, we need to make sure we're getting the coolant right at the cutting edge, not only to keep the tool uh, cool, but also uh, to help with the chip evacuation because we want to make sure those chips are coming out of the hole. We're not getting any chip jamming uh, or causing any issues with machining of the titanium part. Okay, yes, yeah, we've got, on this part we have eight M16 holes and then we've got some clearance holes for some 12 mil cap screws. So we've got a few different holes. Um, the, the cap screw clearances are actually on a concave surface. Do I need to consider anything when I'm drilling those? Yeah, depending on the angles, you know, we do need to take into consideration you know, when we're drilling those uh, features. So we'd always try and say, if we can put a, a flat on there so we can engage the chisel. It's all about making sure the entry into the material is as good as possible and make sure we engage that chisel to get a, a really good drilling process. Okay, so use something like the, the, the roughing end mill to just put a flat on there beforehand so then I can drill on, onto that directly. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, that's interesting to know. So the, the drill itself, you know, I've um, got long drills and short drills in my toolbox. I tend to just put the longest one in because it's the easiest one. Is that the right thing to do? No, no. What we oh, want okay. is a, the shortest drill possible. You know, we want to be making sure we've got a really stable uh, drilling operation, you know, because the last thing we want is, is you know, any deflection in the product uh, because of the length of drill, any vibration that's going to be in there. And it's not just about the, the drill itself, you know, making sure that the back end of that, the tool holding is a really important feature. You know, we've got stability with our Korochuk 930, uh, hydraulic chuck, uh, and also, you know, with our collets as well to make sure that we've got a, a, the minimum run out possible. Yeah, run out, of course, it's a, a big thing with drilling because you're relying on that to make the right hole because you can't do interpolation with a drill. It needs to do exactly the job in one axis. Exactly. You know, we need a really good, stable, straight hole that we're producing. Yeah, perfect. So for the drilling, um, we know sort of roughly how we're doing it. We have got through spindle coolant on here should I peck or shouldn't I peck? I mean, through spindle coolant, we always say there's no need to peck, okay? With the, chip, the chips will come out. If we start to, to peck, it may cause us more problems. Uh, okay, so we're like impacting that tip every time we exactly. peck. Exactly. So let's you know, make sure that we can get down to the, the full depth of the holes required. Okay, that's interesting. So, so I think I know how I'm going to drill this part. Um, I would be very nervous about putting a tap in that titanium piece. We've done a lot of work on it so far, and I don't want to snap a tap in that. So you're advising thread milling? Yeah, we're looking at threading in this, uh, thread milling in this example. So you know, with thread milling, we've got that little bit more security. You know, we're actually interpolating it, we're milling it out. So if there was any tool breakage, it's uh, less risk of any damage to the part. You know, we can take that broken thread mill out and then yeah. we can you know, put a new one in and, and start to machine yeah, it again. Everyone's scrapped a job by snapping a tap in it and it's yeah. a horrible thing to do. It does happen and you know, it is a very difficult thing to, to get those uh, taps out, certainly when we're looking at these kind of operations. So you know, with the thread mill as well, we have that flexibility in there. We are able to alter the offsets you know, and we've got that uh, tolerances that we can hit by changing that offset. So it gives us a little bit more flexibility. And also, you know, the depth, we're able to go as close to the bottom of the hole as possible with a thread mill that we might not be able to do with a tap. Ah, good point. There's no leading, is there, on a thread mill? Exactly. That's a really good point, So actually. we can get really close to the bottom of the hole. Uh, that might be a feature that customers may have. Yeah, definitely. So I think back to when I you know, had a, a previous role and we used to do surface coating on the parts. And we'd always struggle with tapping because it's difficult to get non-standard taps. So I suppose with a thread mill, you've got infinite control over that pitch diameter. Absolutely. Like you said, we, you know, we can produce different tolerances that are available. You know, in some cases we do have oversized taps, you know, but you've got more control of that 
uh, feature, depending on the thickness of the coating that you're putting on afterwards. Oh, perfect. And then the last thing I just want to gloss over is the, um, the Coro Plus tool guide I had a look at earlier has mentioned that I need to do multiple passes. Is that something that's quite common with thread milling? You don't do it in one go? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the material again. If we're looking at something like titanium, you know, from a safety point of view and ensure we're getting the best out of the tool, like we did with the high feed side milling, we maybe use a smaller engagement so it's a quicker process. We're not putting a large load onto the side of that tool. So, you know, we can look at multiple steps in more difficult to machine materials. Okay, that's really interesting. So I suppose, again, it's now down to us to go into Fusion to see how do we actually program the drilling and the threading. And we need to make sure that you out there can actually make sure you can make your parts as quickly and efficiently as possible with this combination of the Sandvik Coromant tooling and the Fusion 360 strategies. So let's have a look and see how we do this. The eight holes on the lugs of this part are drilled at 10.2 millimeters and then machined to have an M12 thread. Heading over to our Coro Plus tool library, we can quickly narrow down the comprehensive range of tools supplied by Sandvik to the recommendation based on our attributes and features. With the Coro Plus tool library being fully integrated into Fusion, this means we can easily go back into the CAD environment and take measurements such as the hole depth. Let's use this information to get our recommended tool. As well as the tool geometry, the recommended cutting data is also chosen along with this selection. We can now build our full tool assembly. Choosing our collet, then the Coro Chuck 930 hydraulic holder, and now the adapter for our HSK100 spindle nose. Let's save this tool and send the assembly over to Fusion 360. Now we have our tool, we can decide what holes need to be drilled. We can choose the hole face from the CAD and then select same diameter, looks across the part for holes of the same diameter in the same orientation. Let's head over to our passes tab and choose a simple drilling cycle. However, different applications can require peck drilling. This is normally where heat or swarf evacuation can be a concern. That's our drilling sorted, now onto the thread milling. With the Sandvik Coro Plus tool library being fully integrated into Fusion 360, any tool that has already been selected can then be found in Fusion 360's own tool library. We are thread milling this component rather than using a fixed form tap. This will give us a higher level of control due to the feature being interpolated by the tool. As this is a blind hole, we need to lift the bottom height slightly to ensure we don't rub the thread mill on the bottom of the hole. Our hole is modelled at the minor size, so we need to apply the diameter difference between the major and minor diameter here. If your hole was modelled at the major size, there is no need to enter this, as we're extracting the size from the selected geometry. We can also make the adjustments in Fusion 360 to ensure the thread is machined correct to specifications. This is especially useful when it comes to non-standard thread tolerances that have coatings applied after manufacturing, reducing the need for costly specialist tooling. We can adjust the diameter offset here to suit. Let's also add some extra passes as recommended by the Coro Plus tool library earlier. If you have multiple drilling operations in your manufacturing workflows, Fusion 360's hole recognition can automate the selection of toolpaths based off of model geometry without having to make any manual selections. This is removing the need for repetitive programming tasks and keeping consistent proven techniques across an engineering team. Once again, thank you for your help and assistance in making sure I've got the right tools for the right application and also the right parameters in there to make sure that we can thread this part correctly. So we had a quick look at choosing the right drill. Why did we go down the route of this drill length and diameter mainly? And then also the thread milling. A few little tips we discussed before about making sure we've got the right number of passes in there to reduce that load, especially when working with these exotic materials. So thank you all very much for watching. Please join us again next time when we're gonna have a look at how we've done the finishing on the component using Sandvik Coromant's ball nose end mills. And again, if you want any more information on what you've seen today, please click on the links in the description below. And with that, 
we'll see you all again next time.